Are we on, Trev? Are we on? Lovely. Look at this. Now listen, this is a clue, obviously, everyone. Hello, by the way, everyone. Welcome to Beer Sweden Television. As you may know, some of you, I've been away, but now I'm back. Uh, and I've been to uh, the UK, and while I was there, I bought back a few of these, Trev. What are they? English sausages. English sausages. Um, best sausage in the world, actually, Trev. Don't even get me started on Swedish sausages. What's that all about, Trev? Varmkorv. Huh? Oh, they're awful, aren't they? And the Danes, if you're only Danish watching, you're not very good at sausages either. Trev, though, this is a very, let's just step forward a little bit. This is a very Germanic episode we're going to do right now because we're going to talk about Oktoberfest beers. German sausages, Trev. Do you know anything about those? Uh, no, not personally, but aren't they a bit like those Swedish, what's it, is it Isteband or something, whatever it's Isteband. called? Isteband. Mm. These sort of, they're big, aren't they? And they're big and they're sort of like bit fatty. fatty and mm. tasteless. What is it? But, but really, seriously, we make the best sausages in the world, don't we? Of course we do. We do. So, um, underrated, but listen, we'll eat those after the show. Um, anyway, back to the beer, because that's what it's all about. Um, today we're going to try two different Oktoberfest beers. did a little uh, article, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was, about Oktoberfest beers. Last week, a lot of Oktoberfest beers came into the system below. I think it was 12 in total. Got two of them here in front of me. Uh, the idea behind this show, Trev, is to, oh, so good to be back, by the way. By the way, look at the weather. Absolutely stunning. T-shirt weather again, early September. Take it all back about the weather in Sweden. Taking it all back. Um, the uh, Oktoberfest beers are in. Um, okay, they're called October, but obviously we're drinking them in September. Uh, that's a lot to do with the history of the Oktoberfest. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that. That's the world's largest knees up in terms of beer. Did you know that, Trev? Six and a half million people gathering in Munich to basically drink a roughly seven and a half million litres of beer. That's a lot of beer, Trev. That is a lot of beer. Do you know what, Trev? I have never been to the... And I don't want this to be a hint or anything like that. And I don't want you to put little sort of hint, hint, you know, signs up all over. Never been to the Oktoberfest. One of those sort of holes in my beer CV. It'd be nice to go, wouldn't it, one day? What do you think? Anyway, back to the beer. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try these two beers here. Uh, one is a traditional, I suppose it's fair to say, traditional Oktoberfest beer. Drink, drink, drink. From uh, Hofbrau uh, uh, in uh, Munich, uh, which is of course the home of the Oktoberfest. Uh, and that's obviously one of the traditional beers that's served in those huge tents over there. Traditionally, it's only Munich brewers that are allowed to sell their beer during the Oktoberfest. Uh, and the other one that we're going to try is uh, a more modern interpretation from the United States, from our friends over there um, at Samuel Adams. And it's their kind of modern spin on an Oktoberfest beer. So that's what we're doing. Old, new but essentially both of them are a celebration of the Oktoberfest. Now let's give you a little bit of stats. Trev, I've had to print them out because I'm not really that up to date with my Oktoberfest sort of, you know, stats. So I hope you don't mind if I refer to, oh there you are, refer to uh, some notes here. Because the festival itself is just so enormous in terms of scale that it's worth noting. Um, now I've got some stats that go back to 2007, okay? So you can imagine that really it's since then it's grown a hell of a lot. So to take a lot of these stats with a pinch of salt, but interestingly, uh, in 2007, 6.2 million people visited the festival. Uh, they drank um, nearly uh, six and a six point nine million litres of beer, okay? Um, 80,000 litres of wine. Don't know what that's all about, really, to be honest with you. But these are the important stats: chicken. Over half a million pieces of chicken were eaten, Trev. Did you know that? In the 1679 festival. Pork sausages. Not these pork sausages, though. These are proper pork sausages. German pork sausages. Uh, they ate uh, 1,400... 142,000 pairs of sausages. I'm trying to double it up in my mind there, Trev. It's too early for me to do that sort of complicated math. 300. Huh? Oh, whatever. Uh, pork knuckles, let's not go into that. Oxen, 104 units. Is that, is a whole oxen a unit, do you think, Trev? Do you think? Oh. Um, but here's very important. Um, they had 878 metres of urinals. Um, and there were uh, lost property, 4,000 items were recovered in 2007, including 260 pairs of glasses. This is important, you need to know this stuff about the Oktoberfest. 
260 pairs of glasses, 200 mobile phones, which actually I don't think that's bad, I lose my mobile phone all the time actually. Imagine six and a half million people. But importantly, a pair of crutches. <laughs> Talk to me about that. Huh? In 2007, one of you, I hope you're watching, you lost your crutches. That must have been a good party, hasn't it? <laughs> huh? Really. Anyway, that's enough of that. It's an incredibly good knees up, and I do recommend that if you uh, could ever find your way over to the Oktoberfest, do it, because it's one of those awesome beer events. Okay, let's start off. I think we should start off old world, don't you, Trev? Kind of makes sense. So we're going to start off with this beer. I'm going to hold it up for you. Can you see that? So it's Hofbrau München Oktoberfest beer. I'm not even going to go there with my German pronunciation. I'm just going to sort of, you know, going to go as it is. 6.3% Trev. If you can throw all the details up about that from the system below, I 6.3% uh, in terms of alcohol. Now, what am I expecting with an October beer? I'm going to open this while I'm talking. What am I, I've done this for ages, Trev. No, you got uh, me. Uh, Let's pour this up for you. What am I expecting in an Oktoberfest beer? Well, kind of like this, really, to be quite honest with you. Oktoberfest beers are essentially quite a pretty colour, isn't it, this morning? Look at that. Very, very golden, slightly more orange hue to it, I suppose, than your standard sort of lager-looking beer. Uh, got a quite sticky, frothy, uh, white head to it. Yeah. Um, Let's talk a little bit about the style. Basically, it's kind of like a cousin of uh, Marzen, which is a beer uh, that was brewed um, uh, back in the day when uh, we didn't have refrigeration or anything like that. And traditionally, this is a very seasonal beer. And traditionally, what happened was that you brewed uh, some very strong beers in March, which is obviously the German for, that's where Marzen comes out of. Um, and you would keep those over the summer months um, and they would actually develop and so on. They'd be a little bit stronger. They had to be stronger to actually withstand, you know, the slightly uh, the longer periods of time. Uh, you couldn't brew, of course, in the summer. Far too hot. You used to get all sorts of infections and so on and so forth. And you would actually end up drinking the last of these beers sometime in September, October. And that's the reason why this sort of festival started. First one back in um, 18... Uh, 10 Trevor. So this year actually is the 200th anniversary of the Oktoberfest and it was uh, it was a really it was first started to commemorate the uh, I think it was the anniversary was it the wedding of some king and a queen uh, and a princess or something like that or a prince and a princess Trevor. Can't remember the names um, but anyway that was what started it all off and here we are 200 years later so this style Mars and this is what this Oktoberfest beer sort of grew out of uh, it's a little bit more of a modern interpretation. Oktoberfest beers themselves came in. It's perhaps a slightly lighter version of them. Drinkability is the key here because, of course, um, people drink litres and litres of this during the festival itself. So let's try it. First of all, Trev, it may be German, but you still got to give it a whirl. Uh, what are you getting is, is that kind of malty. Uh, I'm getting actually a lot of uh, vegetable notes on this, Jeff. But it's a very malt accented beer, it should be that. Uh, it's a kind of a strong lager, to be honest with you. They normally look, they're playing around the 6% mark. Uh, this, as I say, is just tipped over that, 6.3. Uh, not a stunning nose, to be honest with you. Uh, it's kind of fairly sort of grainy cereal malts with a little bit of sweet corn or something like that underneath it a little bit of buttery note to it there as well um, I, I'm not jumping up and down Trev I'm not jumping up and down at the moment but I'm going to try it better in the mouth actually quite smooth quite smooth actually you can imagine this is quite quaffable in some ways a little bit of naked sort of alcohol coming through at the end um, quite sweet, a um, little bit of vegetable, sort of vegetable water. But as I say, very, 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 very f mild carbonation, which means I can see this actually being quite easy to neck. You know, you haven't got all that sort of aggressive fizziness, which sort of swells you up, bulges you out. Bitterness wise, yeah, medium, moderate, sort of bitter finish. Just a bit dull, really, Trev. A bit um pa pa. Scores. Two point four for me, Trev. 
that's the new decimal diddly balls we're doing now. 2.4 for that one. Let's crack on and see what the new world Oktoberfest beer is all about. Hold it up first, look, I'm getting carried away with myself. Uh, this is from Samuel Adams, one of their many seasonal beers. Available in the system below. Get Treb, you can do all of that. Right, let's pour this up. Now, this is going to be a very different colour, I can tell you straight away. And wow, yes it is. Here we go, hold this one up for you. Now, look at this. The colour of autumn. Yeah, you've got this sort of russet, um, just as the leaves. Actually, I was noticed that yesterday, Trev, up here in the north of Sweden. The leaves are just starting to turn, and you're getting that kind of sort of reddish brown sort of tinges to the leaves. Exactly like that in this beer, getting some lovely colour there. Now, uh, this is brewed by Sam Adams. They do lots of seasonal beers and they're generally of a pretty good quality. Um, this is brewed using five different types of malt. So you've got loads and loads of malt character in here. You can see that in some of the colour there. Lovely looking colour. I mean, seriously, tell me, talk to me. What do you think? What do you see there? What's the most appetising of those two? Yeah, straight away. I might not be right in terms of flavour and taste and this, that, and, and smells, but look wise, this has got it for me. Right. Give it a whirl, Trev. Give it a whirl. Lots more going on in the nose. All the malts. A uh, little bit of... A little bit of chocolate. Sweet, sort of dried fruit. Uh, raisins, a bit of molasses, a bit of brown sugar in there too, Trev. Yeah, really nice, robust sort of malty sort of notes to it. It feels nourishing. Like eating a tree, Trev. Okay. Try some. Well, this is much, much better. Again, very smooth, creamy sort of mouthfeel to it. Press with this one. Uh, again, all about the malts. They do use Bavarian hops in this one. They're not telling me actually anywhere. I can't find which ones they use. If anyone knows, please let me know. Um, but it's not about the hops here at all. This is, a, this is a, a, I think, a very, um, although it's not particularly faithful copy of the uh, Oktoberfest beers, I think it's a better interpretation, to be honest with you. Much more interest in this beer. Um, loads of hearty sort of malty flavours to it. This is the kind of beer, as the sun's getting a little bit sort of, you know, it's, it's sort of dampening down, there's no heat in the day anymore, you're starting to put your coat on, you want to warm up a little bit. This is the sort of beer that really does actually, you need and it lifts you. In terms of ABV, Trev, do you know how strong 5 .5. this one is? 5.5%. 5.5%, okay, perfect, absolutely perfect. Um, a very autumnal beer, a very seasonal beer, just right for now. Uh, but, in terms but, of score, go on. So, sorry, go on. Yeah, go on. Oh, you, you, you start. Um, what, what do you think the Germans would think? Is that like an abomination? Because it doesn't look like, doesn't taste like. It, yeah. What's the point of even well, pretending it is? Yeah. It, you know what I mean? Well, do we really care, Trev? No, no, well, no. I don't mean it like no. that. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I don't know actually. To be honest with you, I think it's uh, you know it's one of those events that's so huge, it's international anyway. Uh, so why not? I mean, you know, Americans are well known for not really um, <clears throat> giving um, a monkeys giving a monkeys about anything else in terms of beer stars, so why would they give a monkeys about whether it's a true um, Munchen um, Oktoberfest beer? Fair enough. And, and quite rightfully so. They've taken the, the concept of it with this Marzen, and in fact, it turns, I actually think this is, to me, this is more as I uh, uh, interpret a Marzen than this, to be honest with you. Uh, this, I think, is a little bit more dumbed down. This is a little bit more, you know, it's got a little bit more rocks. It's got more rocks to it, this one, Trev. Like it. In terms of score, three, Point four, Trev. I'm liking these decimal things. I can have all sorts of fun with that. Three point four. So in my world, a clear winner. Uh, Samuel Adams um, Oktoberfest beer, clear winner over the traditional Hofbrau uh, Munchen. But um, uh, anyway, that's it. Uh, stay tuned because the next episode is going to be a pretty important one. It's our fiftieth anniversary or fiftieth our fiftieth episode, Trev. Until then. <coughs> Cheers and beers. Good night, ladies. Ladies, good night. It's time to say goodbye. Let me tell you now.